Hello everyone, I am Grimwit, and this video is the solution page for the upper floor for the Let's Play Maze thread on the Something Awful forum. This is the third of five videos. The upper floor's pattern is that all doors leading down to the ground floor or the basement never again lead back upwards, except for room one, which in its own way is part of the path. This is because the upper floor is the correct floor to get to the center of the maze and back again. We will be covering these rooms in the order that the goons have explored them. Also, as I cover these rooms, I will not be covering the riddle of the path as I go. This will only be covering which door is the correct one and why. As always, I do not have all the answers to the maze. These are the solutions that I have discovered myself or by reading other people's theories. Room 1. Oh, you'll love this. The first room we start in has some unfair anagrams. In the text, there are these lines. Decisions, decisions, one said. Too many decisions. The story of my life, said another. The door with story above it is the wrong door. We don't want to be late, said a third, opening one of the doors. Late can be rearranged to spell tail, which is also wrong. Nary a soul to be seen, said the first, peering into the gloom. Nary can be rearranged to spell yarn, which is also wrong. The only word above the doors that is not found in the text is fable, above door 26, which is the correct door. Right off the bat, the maze greets you with the kind of unfair puzzles it's so full of. I've also read that the scrolls on the floor will bend to form a two and a six, but I just, I don't see that. Room 20. In the text, there are the words, with backwards looks. This seems to show people just starting the maze should go back to door one, which is the correct door. Room 20 is actually the last room in the path. The arrow could also be seen as a hidden one, indicating that door one is the correct door. Room five. In the text, the guide says, What were their chances of choosing wisely? One in four? Two in four, perhaps? If I was generous about it, and why not be generous? There is one door that is the correct door, and two of the doors don't lead to the basement, which is a trap. The doors are clearly separated by a tree in the center of the room. The two drawers on the right, which are the correct doors, well, the, the non-lethal ones, have a flower next to it that shows that they are safe. There's also a lot of references to fours and fourths. The fourth door is door 20, the correct door. Old gray guy almost got this one right. Room 30. This room is a headache. The clock is pointing to F, the sixth letter of the alphabet, but the hand could be pointing to where the seven should be on the clock. Six by seven is 42, the correct door. I know this feels like a stretch and that's because it is. There's a reference to Eve in front of door five. There's also a male symbol, Adam, pointing to door 15. There is an apple tree in front of door 35. All of these are Genesis references and I have no idea what that means. As Telegnostic noticed, if no Eve can be rearranged to spell one five, but it's clearly pointing to door five not 15. All doors have something drawing attention to them except for door 42. And that's all I've got for this room. Room 15. Awesome. On door 30 is a poster with SVN on it. This is 7 with the E's removed. 30 plus 7 is 37, the correct door. Another interesting thing I've seen is that the shadows fall over the O and the 3 above the doors on the back wall. That just leaves 3 and 7, 37 again. Room 42. Everything in this room speaks of pairs. There's a pair of scissors, a pair of condiments, a pair of boots, a pair of a pair of boots, a pair of dice, and a, an actual pair. There are four good boots here. There are also four feet on the picture above. A pair of a pair is four. Four is the correct door. 
The bear is pointing into door 30 with a sign that says centers this way, door 30 being the wrong door. An interesting note, the other boot is the mate to the boot in room 38. Room 37. The top of the dice show a two and a blank, blank being zero. Or if you need another zero, there's a shadow of a net on the floor that shows a zero. Two and zero form a 20, the correct door. Room 26. This room uses process of elimination. We already know that door one isn't correct, at least not yet. The devil's fork and the other devil's tail is pointing to 38 and 36. Both are wrong. This just leaves door 30, the correct door. Another way of putting this is in the text, it reads, I quickly picked up the bell, ringing it loudly. A ring is circular, like the end of the bell on the floor, which is also circular, like a zero. There are also three real devils. Three and zero is 30. Room four. This room has two correct doors, depending on which way you're going. In the text, there is a line. A small black cat ran out of the door to my right, sniffed at us, and, before I could move, ran out of the hallway. The black cat, being a sign of bad luck, is meant to warn you from all the doors on the right-hand side, leaving 44, 29, and 15. Of all the torches in the room, the two next to the sun are the ones that are lit, shining on 29 and 15. Of course, that also points to 11, but perhaps it is assumed by now you know that 11 is in the basement and is a trap room. Another way of putting this is the sign on the left that shows an in and out peg on the chart. This should be signaling that 29 goes towards the inside of the maze while 15 leads out. I admit, though, I am guessing that. Room 29. All the signs point to things that flip or turn. Drinking a bottle, you go bottoms up. You turn a new leaf. The salt and pepper shakers shake upside down. You turn a key. You flip with a spatula. When you turn the page over, you see door 17. The doorknob looks like the top of a staff, but looking at the other staffs to the right, or left if it's upside down, they don't have a top. Eun Reyes and Third Emperor seem to stumble on this point at the same time. Third Emperor also saw that the one and the seven look like part of the candelabra, but only one leg of the candle holder is connected. And that candle is the only one that's lit. Door 17 is the hidden and correct door. Room 17. Because of the direction used and the rules for the shortest possible path, there's really only one door to choose. Door 45 is the correct door. There may be other clues, but why look for them? Just look at the map. There's only one way you can enter, and there's only one way you'll want to go. Room 45. The cleverness of this room is extreme because one of the clues is double-folded. In other words, a clue working out for the riddle of the room is also pointed to the next door, specifically this one. I-A-M in alphanumeric code is 9, 1, and 13. Sum them all together and you get 23, which is the correct door. Also, the spear on the same piece of paper points to door 23. In incredible. Room 28. This room has a twin, but we'll get to that. The clue of the twin, however, is in the last line of the text. I have the strangest feeling of deja vu, said one. The pictures have three ones. One finger here, one finger here, and one bone on a plate. There's also a two on the right painting. Two and three makes twenty-three, the correct door. Placeholder Pigeon also noticed that the paintings move from right to left. The rightmost has two beards, the middle has one, and the left has none. I guess this is another helper to understand the order of the paintings. Room 23. In the thread, I warn that numbers can get confusing in this room. The broken window looks like it should point towards the sixth window, if we count from left to right. But there is no door six. If we count from top to bottom, it becomes the eighth window. Door eight is the correct door. 
Our clue to how we should count the broken window is on the tablet which also counts downwards. Room 32, another unfair anagram. If you change the word C to the letter C, you can then rearrange the letters to spell go back. All doors except for door 28, the one we entered, are one-way doors that lead downwards. Door 28 is the correct door. Room 8. In the text there's the line, Someone knocked a bowl off the table. The crash echoed from the ceiling and whispered away down the corridors. I broke another on purpose. But there's no broken bowl in the pictures you can see. Bowling is the theme here. There is a bowling pin, of course. There are also two broken bowls in the text and one in the picture. The corridor is also called a lane, like a bowling lane. Twelve strikes make a perfect game, door 12 being the correct door. Also in the text, the room is described as a vaulted chamber lit by a single bulb. The bulb is surrounded by two rings on the ceiling. One bulb, two rings. One and two make twelve. Now the next three rooms were played out in rapid succession as they were the last three to be chosen when we filled out the maze. Room 2. The two flags next to door 12 and 22 are battle flags, suggesting conflict and strife. Only the broom, humble but at least peaceful, points to door 29, the correct door. The text reads, keeping in mind what a relative term right is, I assured them they were indeed on the right path. As for the correct path or the most appropriate path, well, that might be something else. This seems to signify that the right door is not the correct door, perhaps the opposite way is, which is door 29 again. Room 12. This is the twin of room 28, and they both have the same text, but the doors lead to different places. Also, the outside of room 28 is fake, showing a picture or drawing of the outside. This is hinting that room 28 is the wrong room. The paintings are different as well, pointing to different doors process of elimination. The middle picture points to room 2, having two fingers. The right picture has two fingers on one hand and one on the other, making 21. The left picture, the man just ate, meaning door 8. The only door not mentioned is door 39, which is the correct door. Room 39, the last room. This room smacks of Edgar Allan Poe's story, The Cask of Amontillado. I am going to assume you've already read the story, or at least know of it. The barrels of wine, or Amontillado, are next to door 12, which is the wrong way, while the trowel, used to brick up the middle door, is next to door 4, the correct way. The guess is that Fortunado left by way of door 4 when he finished. The multiplication tables all point to square numbers. The only door of which is a square is door 4. An interesting note is that the toy is the same toy in room 7. And it looks like the birds in room 32 and room 21. Of note, the text in room 32 reads, Another one, they cried. You mean another representative of the animal kingdom, I asked? What is the bird like that doing here? I don't know what the significant is, but I thought I'd point it out. Now for my maps. I think it's time to tell. I've separated the maps according to the sets of room types discovered by others. Trap rooms, loop rooms, and path rooms. I'll reveal my source at the end of these videos, but any clever person will spot it in a heartbeat what website I got this all from. The pattern of these maps are twofold. First, except for room one, all stairways only lead downwards, and eventually into the basement from which there is no escape. Second, the basement is red, meaning stop, the ground floor is yellow, meaning caution, and the upper floor is green, meaning go. The basement's pattern is that they are trap rooms and there's no way out except room 24, the fail state. The ground floor's pattern is that they loop all around into each other and eventually back to room 1, or the basement. The upper floor's pattern is that, as path rooms, they all lead around in a circle to the center of the maze and return to room 1. That's all for the upper floor and my maps. The next two videos will talk about what the maze's riddles are and what the answer is. Have nothing but fun, YouTubes. Uh, uh, you have roughly 24 hours. <laughs>